calling flight 12. Mexico City calling flight 12. Over. Mexico City calling flight 12. Mexico City calling flight 12. Over. Bridgewood calling flight 12. Over. Bridgewood calling flight 12. Over. That's the last. Well, we passed the village a few miles back. I'd better see if I can get some help. Well, I might take a while. Will you be okay, Mrs. Bellaston? I'll be all right. Don't worry about me. If I ever have another plane crash, man, be there. Hmm? I don't... My head, my head. The man with the steel case. He's unconscious. The steel case? Yes, the steel briefcase. It's our chance. Get it. Well, I can't. It's locked his wrist. I can't move. In Lisbon, you kept moving with a bullet in your stomach. Of course, that was two years ago. He must have a fortune in there to guard it like that. Come on. He has a key for the briefcase with him. It's a plane ticket from Mexico City to Cleveland, Ohio. Name's Albert Richard Kingby. The key.
it's a will. Leaving Albert Richard Kingby over a million dollars in securities. Signed by Miles Kemper. And then a will leaving Kingby a million dollars. Signed by Professor Roland Budlow in New York. Two more. Four separate wills. Each one leaving at least a million in securities to Albert Richard Kingby. Plum tart, roast beef, and split pea soup. It's a menu backwards. Miles Kempton. Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland? Well, that's where Kingby's going. Mrs. Ballister. Please, ma'am. That, that, that sunshine's powerful strong. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I found a man who spoke English. He's gone for help. Do you feel better now? Thanks. Thanks. I'll get some wood. Four wheels. Four million dollars. Miles Kempen in Cleveland. Professor Roland Budlow in New York City. Marie Drummond in Bedford Island. Ben Albee, Providence. And each of them leaves a million dollars to the same person. Well, there must be something slightly illegal about it. And interesting. Plum tart, roast beef, split pea soup. Miles Kempen in Cleveland. Mr. Kempen's apartment. I'll see, sir. Who's calling, please? It's a Mr. Kingby. Kingby? Mr. Albert Richard Kingby. I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Kempton isn't here. I've left town. Mr. Kempton has left town for a few days. Any message? Thank you, sir. No message. Are you feeling ill, sir? I'm quite all right. That'll be all, Charles. Hello, this is Mr. Miles Kempen. Connect me with Lily Brogan, please. Her dressing room, thank you. Lily, listen carefully. Tell Farrell to get hold of his lawyer. The one who defended him in the racket investigation, Kane, I think his name is, Jeff Kane. I'll be right over. Yes, Lily. It's very important. Good evening, Mr. Kempen. Mr. Rogan's in my office. Kane's on his way over. He's a tough man to locate at night. Miles, what's wrong? Oh, just a moment, Farrell. Miss Rogan will not be singing here after tonight. Miles, I can't. I'll say she can't. I've got a contract. Yes, I'm I'm aware of that. Now is is that enough? 
I always like to see people happy. It's okay with me, Mr. Kevin. Lily, will you be ready to take the noon plane with me for Florida tomorrow? Florida? We'll be married in the morning. Married? Oh, Miles. Happy. <laughs> what do you think? I follow this number. See ya. Kevin, here he is, Jeff King. Rod Moyle. How do you do? Wouldn't want a better legal mind, especially for something that ain't quite legal. Thanks. Now, Mr. Kane, this is quite legal. Mm-hmm. I simply want you to draw my will, leaving everything I own to my future wife. The important element is time. I'm being married in the morning. I'm taking the noon plane. I want the new will signed and notarized before I leave. Mr. Kane. Are you listening? No, I'm writing an address. Here's a kid who just got out of law school. He draws a beautiful will. Good night. Mr. Kane, you're right. I want more than that. I understood that you were tough, but there's nothing you wouldn't do for money. And you do protect your clients. What's in the old will? Is that necessary? Can't we say on the new one that it's been, what do you call it? Abrogated? Yeah, we can do that. See, if I should die, they'll attack the new will, say I wasn't in my right mind. You're marrying Lily Rogan? Yes. You're in your right mind. <laughs> After you've protected the will, you ought to see that Lily keeps the money and keeps her life. Mm-hmm. Sounds ominous. And there is the element of danger. For me? I understood you weren't easily frightened. Large fees give me courage. You can write your own. Okay. Come along, I have a table. From the day when he smiled and took my hand, it's so grand to be... Straight scuss, Mr. Kane? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kimpin. Uh, uh -oh. He drinks milk. He is, and he knows it to his, to be missed, to be kissed by him alone. arms I'm aware of the thrill that words alone cannot express and I'm so grateful he allows me a share of his brand of happiness I guess I'm his till he slams the door is forevermore his though I know that the spark may die someday still I'm his and I like it that way
Well, I am surprised. Last place in the world I ever expected to see old Miles Kemp. I'm sorry, I... I rang you up today. Several times, in fact. I was told you'd gone out of town. Oh. Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Kane. Mr. Kingby? Hi. How do you do? Yes, I finished my business sooner than I expected, and I came right here from the train. <laughs> I can see why. Yes, um... Do you have a drink? No, no, thanks. I just ordered dinner at my own table. Plum tart, roast beef, split pea soup. Why don't you two join me? No, no thanks. Hmm. Well, I better be getting back. <laughs> Let's see each other soon, Miles. Whatever you say. Tomorrow. Morning? Well, tomorrow. Tomorrow's fine. Not in the morning, any time after 12. What about lunch? One o'clock. My hotel, the Fortney. Splendid, I'll be there. Good. Good night, Mr. Kane. Good night. If you had a spare room, I could draw your will tonight. If you had a typewriter. If you could stand a bigger fee. You're making too much of my slight intimation of danger. Just bring the will to me tomorrow morning and be on hand until I leave. Do you know, Mr. Kane? I've heard about you a number of times. I've looked at you a number of times. Oh, congratulations. You told him. Is everything settled? Oh, yes, yes, everything's fine. I'll see you in the morning. I'm at the Inwood Apartments. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, Kane? Yeah, fine. The man at the table. What happened to him? He left. Without eating his dinner? He didn't order any. Oh, uh, have a drink, Farrell. Thank you. It's on the house. Good night. Mr. Kempen? Uh, my name's Ballister. No, no, you don't know me. I've just arrived in Cleveland, but I would like to see you. Well, I'd rather not discuss it on the telephone, but it is a matter of considerable importance to uh, both of us. Oh, yes, sir. I could be there in half an hour. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, that wasn't so difficult, was it? Cantaloupe. I don't like it. Do you like having less than a hundred dollars? All right, we've got the appointment. Now how do we begin? How do we go about exploring Mr. Kempen's mind? We've got so little to work on. Oh, you have done more with much less. This is the wrong way for us to start in America. Clyde, I want this stone to be real again. I want to forget that there ever was such a thing as a two-dollar hotel room in Cleveland. Yes, but it's a safe room. There's no one here to bother us, no one to follow us. Why, any two normal people could live here together, happy, with some sort of a future to look forward to. Why must we start the whole thing all over again? Catalan, there isn't anything in the world I wouldn't do for you. Stop whining, then. Remember this, Clyde. When we first met, I lived in a normal safe room. You opened my eyes to the world outside that room, and I like it. I'm going on with you or without you. Make up your mind. Yes, but it's all so vague. Four wills, a menu in reverse. If we only had some idea of what it was all about, it's about four million dollars. That's enough for me. Oh, Mr. Campham? Come in. Are you Mr. Ballister? Yes. 
This is my wife. How do you do, Mr. Campbell? Uh, my name is Duffy. I'm a police lieutenant. Oh, has something happened? Mr. Campen is dead. Dead? But I talked to him on the telephone only half an hour ago. No. You spoke to me. Oh, I see. What did you want to see him about, Mr. Ballister? Well, I don't think that that concerns you, Lieutenant. It might. <laughs> Clyde, I... I think you better tell him. Well, I wanted to ask Mr. Kempen's advice on business. You're an old friend of his? If it was you that answered the telephone, Lieutenant, you know perfectly well that Miles Kempen had never even heard of me. Oh, yes. Do big investors generally live in hotels with a two-dollar top? You'll pardon my curiosity. I had your call traced. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Lieutenant, my husband came here because he needed a job. The diver's yours, Duffy. I've finished. Uh, Just routine. Uh, is there anything else, Lieutenant? No, uh, we don't need you. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Goodbye. Uh, suicide, Doctor? Very ingenious. Man hit himself on the head with a 300 pound statue. Where are you going, Mac? Hello, Kane. Come on in. Hey, Duffy. Hey, he stepped on my toe, Lieutenant. Forget it. Take the car, there. What are you doing here, Kane? Well, I'm Kippen's lawyer. What are you doing here? Oh. I'm afraid you've lost a client. How? An accident. I'll show you. When did it happen? The doctor said he died sometime in the middle of last night. Apparently, it toppled over while he was at the telephone. When we found him, his leg was caught in the telephone cord. He must have fallen against the statue and upset it. He used to stand up there on the pedestal. Who told you that? Lily Rogan. Rogan? Did she find it? This morning when she came. Where's she now? I sent her home. She was pretty badly broken up about it. I can well imagine. Why the great big grin? The corpse had a lot of what it takes. <laughs> You're a cynical fellow. By any chance, a blackjack used on him first and then the statue to cover up? Have you any reason for saying that? No. I hope you won't have any objection if we call it accident. Forget it, Duffy. You know your business. Then why were you trying to make it murder? I got a nasty mind. So long. Yes? Miss Rogan is here. Fine, send her in. Thank you for coming, Miss Rogan. I am sure it'll be to our mutual advantage. Please sit down. Thank you. It's about this item in the legal recorder. The will of the late Miles Kempen, who died two weeks ago, was probated yesterday afternoon. The principal beneficiary is Albert Richard Kingby whose inheritance exceeds a million dollars in stocks and bonds. What has that got to do with me? The night I met Mr. Kempen, I drew a new will for him. Didn't you know that? No. He never had a chance to sign it. It left everything to you. To me? It's uh, quite a piece of cash. It's a shame you won't get it. Thank you. Is that all? Wait a minute. Mr. Kempen was my client, and I feel a moral obligation to carry out his wishes. He wanted you to inherit his fortune. You can't do anything about that now. I'm not so sure. What do you mean? What do you know about Kingby? What difference does that make? Did you know that Kempen was mortally afraid of him? You think he killed Miles? I didn't say that. But I do think between us. We know enough about Kingby to make him part with a few bonds. 
You mean blackmail. Don't even whisper the word. It's just a settlement out of court. All they say about you is true. There's nothing you wouldn't do for money. Nothing. You don't have to get nasty about it. All you have to do is say no. Well, that's the answer. Can't you leave us alone? I'm sorry, Miss Rogan. I didn't understand. No, you wouldn't. I wish I knew how to apologize. Don't bother. Miss Day, get me Joe the porter at the Fortner Hotel. Joe, listen, you've got a man there named Kingby, Albert Richard Kingby. I want to know when he checks out and where he's going. Mr. Kingby. Why, my very good Samaritan. What a pleasant surprise. How do you do? Oh, I'm fine, Mr. Bannister, thanks to you two. Oh. Are you for New York? Yeah. You? Where you go, we go. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Congratulations. Huh? It, didn't you just inherit a lot of money? Me? Yes, we read it in the paper. Uh, what was the man's name? Uh, it was Kempen, wasn't it? <laughs> when I saw you beside the wrecked plane in Mexico, I said to myself, there is a man who looks like a million dollars. <laughs> I wish it were true. It must have been another kingly. I've never heard of Kempen, did you say? Oh, what a pity. I thought we were rubbing shoulders with luck. Touch pitch and you get black, you know. I'm afraid you found the wrong shade of pitch. Well, I'm a little tired. Bed sounds awfully good to me. Good night. Good night. Good night. back in a moment. In that case, we don't have long to get acquainted. Oh, I wonder where we are. For a minute, I thought it was a side of Mr. Kingby that threw you. Excuse me. I must have left my lighter in the club car. Let's talk this over. Mm-hmm. 
English compartment? Yes. Mm -hmm. We'd better call the conductor. Wait. I don't want to be tied up in a murder. He was your husband. Then you are tied up in a murder. Not necessarily. Depends on you. Just as long as I'm not involved. Have a penknife? Yeah. If you ever want a recommendation. I beg your pardon. Oh, that's perfectly all right. I want to get off the train before they find him. Why bring suspicion on yourself? They won't find the body till the train gets in the eyes of New York. Better sit down. You were following Kingby. Why? Who are you? That's not the question I put to the witness. I'd like an answer. All right, I'll answer the question. I was not following him. What's that for? You're in a bad spot. I don't think so. Concealing evidence, accessory after the fact of murder. Exactly the same as you. Oh, no. After I tell the conductor about those labels in your purse, I'll be out of it. I merely looked on. I just wanted to see how far you'd go. So it's only your word against mine. And I'm a fairly respectable citizen. You won't tell the conductor. Don't think I won't use this. Did you buzz me, sir? Sorry, Porter. It was a mistake. You wanted to know who I am. I was Kempin's lawyer. I think Kingby murdered Kempin. And I want to prove it. Not interested in Mr. Kingby's inheritance, of course. Purely incidental. So if I told you that together we might get three times as much as Mr. Kingby got, you wouldn't even listen. I might. Just for politeness. All right. There are three more wills, each one leaving Kingby another million dollars. Who are the testators? <laughs> oh, you know, sometimes I'm cautious myself. Did you ever hear of a menu that begins with a plum tart? What does that mean? What are the names on the wills? I'm afraid I'm going to need you in my business. I think it's about time for us to join forces. We've got a lot to talk about. A partnership? Partnership. Wait a minute. How sure are you that Professor Birdlow doesn't know Kingby? Kempen didn't.
Continue, continue. Uh, hello. I suppose you wish to know if I have time to take your child. I always answer one can make time if one must. My name is Kingby. Yes, sir. This is Mrs. Kingby. How do you do? How do you do? Your child is undoubtedly very young, and you wish to know what age is best to start. My name is Albert Richard Kingby. Oh, yes. Of course. And if you'll excuse me for a moment, and my pupil. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. You asked me for a piece. I gave you a piece. But you are not ready for a piece, my boy. So we return to the arpeggios and the chromatic scale. Now, start. Please come in. I'm sorry to have kept you. Sit down. Thank you. I must say I'm surprised to see you so soon. Why? Uh, the morning paper said uh, that you disappeared from your train last night before it reached New York. Well? The paper also said that an unidentified dead body was found in your compartment. I don't like being questioned, Professor. Please understand that. I, I merely thought that uh, New York should be a dangerous place for you at this time. New York can be a dangerous place for anyone. Professor, I think my husband is irritable because he's hungry. I know I am. Got a plum tart in your icebox? Would that satisfy you? Not completely. Then maybe some roast beef. Split pea soup. The fact is that I expected you unaccompanied. Why? Well, I, I suppose I imagine. Imagination plays no part in this business. But still, you got off the train before it reached New York. How did you get here so quickly? I did it on a magic carpet. I like magic carpets. And I like the will you signed. I'd even like to put it into operation. Right now. I must confess, this is a tremendous relief to me. Uh, you will understand, Mr. Kingby. I had to make sure. Naturally. Come along, dear. Uh, once again, I'll be a free man, able to put all my attention upon my music. I'm very, very grateful. No more than we are. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're both happy. Now I'm really hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, Professor. Good day. Goodbye. Sir. What's in there? Bonds. How much? A million. I like your style, Kane. For a minute there, I wasn't so sure about it myself. I didn't know whether he was going to pull a gun or the bonds. Yes. And you stood between the professor and me in case it was a gun. Somebody had to be left to yell for help.
Wait for me. Yes, sir. My fault. You don't like hot dogs? Mm-mm. Well, what do you do at a baseball game? Never been to a baseball game. Hmm? Huh? Strange race, woman. <clears throat> well, I guess we're ready for business. Here? Yeah. The most private place in the world. Nobody would believe us if we told them what it was. Well, I've never had heart failure before, but... Look, I'll show you. Excuse me, stranger, could I interest you in a brand new $100,000 bond. Cost you exactly a quarter. Say, what do you think I am, a sucker? Oh, excuse me, no, no offense. Two coffees. Right. Like the rocket, Gibraltar, every one of them. You pay able to bear One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So half a million dollars for you, and 500,000 for me. And 50 cents cash for me. I hear they're putting a ceiling on pipe dreams, brother. Sugar? No, thank you. Let's see. The next is Marie Drummond on Bedford's Island. Quite a trip up there. Yes, it's about six hours, but... Here's to you, Marie Drummond. You look very fetching when you're puzzled. Do you think Bedford's Island is worth the risk? I wouldn't try it alone. Would you? Oh, I wouldn't even think about it. I know you wouldn't. After all, what's money? All we want is enough for a little log cabin in Maine, with a black tile bathroom for you and maybe a yacht for me, and enough money in the bank to spend 50 or 60,000 any time we want to. Careful, cautious game. You said we. You know something? What? There are some people you don't have to be cautious with. I know exactly how I stand with you. How? Facing you. <clears throat> Both of us know that a turn back makes an excellent target for a knife. I would just as soon not hear about a knife. Sorry. Kane. Huh? Clyde never meant anything to me. Not really. Will you believe that? Nope. Now about the lady on Bedford's Island. I'll think about it. All right, let's forget about the whole thing today. You know, I feel strangely rich. I want to buy you things. Orchids, dinner, a show, and take you to the best nightclub in town. I want to step on your feet and feel your hair on my nose. I was wrong about you. You are a romantic. A deal? That's a deal. I have to go to the station and get my clothes. I haven't worn a long dress for three months. I'd better get a shave. I'll get our bag. Fine, I'll get us a couple of rooms at the Cheswick. Adjoining? You've got the gun. <laughs> Here's the check for my trucks. Thank you. Screwballs. Tried to sell me a $100,000 barn for two bits. No kid. Yeah. Gee, do I look like a dope? Oh. One ticket for Bedford Island, please. Thank you. Change at New Bedford for the ferry. Thank you.
I'm sorry. We're close for the season. I wish to see Miss Drummond. There's no Miss Drummond. Marie Drummond? Mrs. Drummond. Yes. Business? Yes. You can save your breath. She ain't buying nothing. Well, um, tell her it's about... It's about a will. Wait here. Hey, Ma. Ma says you should come in. My dear, sit here. Thank you. It was something about a will? Yes, in which my husband is a beneficiary, Albert Richard Kingby. Why didn't your husband come? <sighs> didn't you read the paper today? Yes. Well, then you can understand it's a little uncomfortable for him to appear in public. Oh, yes. So I have taken his place. You've just come all the way from New York. Yes. You must be tired. Oh. And hungry. Shan't I get you something to eat? Thank you. It's very thoughtful of you. What shall it be? A plum tart, roast beef, and split pea soup. Maud is a man to see you. Who? Mrs. Kingley, would you mind waiting for a moment in there? Jonathan will show you. Uh, Jonathan, take good care of Mrs. Kingley. Yes, Ma'am. Come in, Mr. Kingley. Claims to be your wife, Mr. Kingby. I suspected that she was an imposter. You will see that she gives no trouble, Jonathan. Get away from her. Of course, she's my wife. Come here, darling. You didn't know that she was coming? Does it matter? Possibly. Get the bonds, Mrs. Drummond. Very well. A very entertaining performance. Well, let's be comfortable while we consider the situation. Sit down, Mrs. Bannister. And Mr. Um, Kane, if I remember correctly. Extremely 
energetic of you, Mr. Kane. You vandal. You've broken my best lamp. Stop that, Mrs. Drummond. I don't know where I'll ever get another milk glass shade. Release me. Well, Mrs. Bannister, it's a long way from Matamoros, Mexico. No longer than it takes to commit two murders. <laughs> My friends, let us be brief. Yes. I should like the bonds you got from Professor Budlow. I'm afraid this isn't going to be brief. Do you have them with you? No. Oh. I'm afraid I don't trust you, Mr. King. Your reputation is not too savory. Did you say that? You will stand still, if you please. Jonathan? Your purse, please. She brought a suitcase, more. Where, dear? In the parlor. Excellent. You will remain with our friends, Ezra. If they won't tell us where the bonds are, we'll let them lead us. Your key, Mrs. Bannister. Thank you, Mr. Kingby. Well, my friends, what are we going to do? You've got me there. I need those bonds badly. Very badly. You know, Mr. Kingby, my heart bleeds for you. You might just as well give them to me and gain my friendship. Darling. Yes? Do we want to be friends with him? <laughs> well, I don't like him as an enemy. Perhaps a change might help. Mm-hmm. Now, that's sensible. Let's talk it over quietly and simply. That's the way I like it. Oh, don't quit the gun. Quiet and get moving. as comfortable as a hotel, but a lot safer at the moment. The first ferry, I think, leaves about 7 o'clock in the morning. Well, we better keep our eyes open. That's my department. You get some sleep. I wonder what kind of business he's in. Who, Kingby? 
Yeah. Miles Kepin wanted to leave his money to Lily Rogan, but he was scared to death over the idea of doing it. Then Kingby appeared and Kepin died. You know, Professor Budlow and Mrs. Drummond certainly don't live like millionaires. Well, the strange thing is that, well, none of them appear to have anything in common with each other. Except leaving Kingby a million dollars apiece. What about the fourth will? Mr. Ben Albee of Providence. Yes. I wonder what he'll turn out to be. I hope I don't find out. You're a rather wonderful man, Kane. Hmm? I said you are a rather wonderful man. Sure. Chock full of the instinct of self-preservation. <laughs> well, you could have thrown me to the wolves, you know, for coming up here alone. I like to pick my own wolves. Funny? Well, well, I don't know why I'm apologizing to you. After all, you didn't go to the Hotel Chesapeake either. No. The ferry's up that way. Could be a bottleneck, you know. Yes, I know. It was loaded when Kingby took it from my purse. I'm a brilliant fellow. He let us escape. That ferry is going to be a bottleneck. Well, I looked all over. None of them aboard. Drink to me only with thine eyes. That's a corny tune. You're a hard man, Cain. Something rather symbolic about this. Symbolic? Mm hmm. About what? It's the first time I've leaned on anyone, really. Feels quite impressive, if you know what I mean. I could make a stab at it.
Well, what's next for us? Yes, I'm asking you. You are the senior partner. Okay, Junior. Well, next we've got to dispose of the bonds. Where? Mexico, South America. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Sounds almost too good for us. Two to New York. Thank you. Looks as if we have broken the bottleneck. We've even got time to celebrate. The paper I left with you yesterday, please. Thank you. Business King is in. Do you what? He's working for the Nazis. Captain Budlow, Marie Dremon, Ben Orbe. The money must have been deposited with them somehow before the war and then put into good American bonds. Yes. Budlow didn't know us, yet he gave us the bonds. That means when the money is needed, an agent appears identifies himself with the name of Mr. Kingby at the menu. The wills must have been for protection. In case any of them died before Kingby got here, or didn't want to give up the money like Kempen. All those bonds are to pay for a hideaway for Nazi leaders who can escape from Germany. <laughs> Not the million dollars we have. Kingby still has three million. Kingby. <laughs> you don't want to get involved with him again, do you? No. But we've got to tell the police. The police would take the bonds away from us. You're right. We've got to turn them over first. <sighs> Not really. Really, this is childish. I'm surprised at you. I'm a little bit surprised at myself. There's only one thing that counts. You know that as well as I do. Get what you're after. Now we both got that. And more. Kane. Kane. I don't really know how much I mean to you. I think you do know. Well, why throw it all away then? There isn't anything I wouldn't risk just for you. This isn't even a gamble. You just want to give up. Carola, this is bigger than money. Nothing is bigger than a million dollars. Nothing. I guess I'm a little backward. Let's forget it. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you see what happens when you argue? Excuse me.
were told to kill the lady if he made any trouble. All right, let's go. Stay where you are. I saw the lady get the bonds in the station and put them in her purse. It's almost train time, Kane. We better... Oh. Well, old home... Let's keep it quiet. Got to pay my check. Drinks are on me. Thanks. Mr. Alden? I'm out in the station wagon. Hmm. You wouldn't have thrown the bonds out of the window, wouldn't I? Where are the bonds? I've had a lapse of memory. Jonathan. Get up, Mr. Kane. Stool, Jonathan. Sit down, Mr. Kane. I'll take it standing. Uh, wait a minute, Mr. Kingby. Perhaps we can talk business. Perhaps. Uh, Kane and I are not exactly greedy. We might consider a reasonable share. What do you consider reasonable? 75%. For me? <laughs> no, for us. I'm afraid that terminates the discussion. Uh, Mr. Kingby, I, uh, I realize that your arguments are stronger than ours. What do you consider reasonable? Seventy-five percent for me. Uh-huh. Okay. You know, uh, this place doesn't look exactly healthy. She doesn't know where the bonds are, Kingby. And I'm not going to tell her. Get up, Mr. Kane. We've plenty of time for this sort of thing. I know. Please tell them. The money isn't worth it. It's not the money. I don't understand. I do, Mrs. Ballister. I understand him very well. Jonathan, take care of Mrs. Ballister. She doesn't. 
doesn't know anything, Kingby. I realize that. I'm truly sorry, Mrs. Ballister. I don't know how long you will last through a physical beating. But then I'm not really interested in that. I'm solely interested in how long Mr. Kane will allow it to continue. Listen, Carol. Oh, tell them, Kane, please tell them. You know what kind of business they're in. I won't be able to stand it. Carola. You said that you loved me. I do. He means he could not love thee dear so much, loved he not honor more. Mrs. Bellister, it's not sporting to shoot a sitting pigeon. Mr. Albury, perhaps you'd better hold her up this time. Our trade has its blacker moments, Mr. Albury. That's right, Mr. Albury. Hard to take, isn't he? Maybe it's because you haven't got the cultural background of your Aryan friend. It takes a real Superman to beat a woman. No, Mr. Kane. Not quite clever enough. <laughs> Don't think that I'll lose my temper and let this gun go off. You want Mrs. Ballister spared any further pain because she knows nothing. No, Mr. Kane. No, we're not going to shoot you. Yet. Mr. Albee, if you please. You, you crazy? Yes. Yes, he's crazy. Crazy enough to die and to sacrifice me for something he believes in. It's beyond me, Cain. But if it's that important to you, it must be worth fighting for. Should hold you for a while. Thank you. Thanks, Doctor. Yes, we got everything. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Don't forget the district attorney wants to see you tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock. We'll be there. Oh, I almost forgot to give you this. The girl in the bar says it belongs to you. No. It belongs to you. I'll take care of it until tomorrow morning, then. Well, what's next, senior partner? Oh, no, you don't, Junior. Our business just went out that door. But, uh, think I've got a steady job for you. <laughs> 